Hello everybody, I'm Lula Zarovic here from Neo4j and in this session I'm going to be covering the APOC conditional procedures. In this session we're going to be looking at the case and when conditional procedures. These include the read queries as well as the write queries. Don't worry, I will be explaining the difference between those ones. We're going to be using examples based on the MovieGraph database, which is easily available in the Neo4j browser. And the documentation is available for you to have a look at, which is in this link here. So the data we're going to be using is the MovieGraph database. And you can get this from the browser by clicking the write code button, create a graph button, and then we move next to pull the relevant query. Don't worry if you've not seen the browser before, we're going to step through this so when you start Neo4j browser, you'll be greeted with something that looks like this. And we're going to use the fact that we have this pre-canned queries to generate some data, which we're going to be using for the rest of our examples. So if we click here on write code, and then we're going to click on create graph. And then this brings up the play movie graph example. So for those of you who are not so familiar with Neo4j or you're just starting out, I would heartily recommend when you've got a moment to go through this example. It's a worked example which starts to introduce you to Cypher queries and how you can start thinking about querying not only with specific data points, but also querying with patterns. And you start to do some really cool things such as doing shortest path, as well as finding Kevin Bacon numbers and also building a simple recommendations engine. So well worthwhile having a go at this later. But for the purposes of this session, we're going to be pulling the data here that creates a sample graph database for the movies. So we click on this and this sends a query up into query window. And then we're just going to press play to execute the query. And for those of you who are wondering why this has been returned, at the bottom of the query we just executed, it sends back films that Tom Hanks has been involved with. So that's just the end of the query executing. But we have the data in there that we're going to be working with in this session. So I'm going to introduce the use case now, which is enriching the movie graph database, which we've just loaded. So the first thing we're going to be doing is tagging existing movies by era, so changes, blockbuster and modern. So what we're going to be doing is having a look at the release year of the movie and attaching the appropriate tag to it. And the de definitions that we're using in the years are coming from this website here, which is the history of film.net. The next thing we're going to do is return an era description. So we're going to specify a specific movie and we want to have a look at what the era is associated with that movie and return a description. So for example, what does blockbuster mean, etc. Then we're going to classify actors based on upcoming or established based on the number of movies they've done. So this is the metric that I've selected to differentiate between the two. And last but not least, we're then going to label actors as either legacy or Hollywood based on the film eras they've acted in. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be effectively refactoring the graph slightly and adding new labels to our nodes. And we're going to do this based on the number of eras the actor has been involved in. So let's have a look at the first example. And in this first example, we're going to be tagging existing movies by era. And to do this, we're going to be using the APOC do case procedure. And you'll notice here there's a do preceding case. So this means this is going to be a write query. So we're going to be making some changes to our data. And if we look at the breakdown of the procedure, you can see we have these square brackets. And in these square brackets, we're going to be containing the condition and the query we're going to be executing when that condition is met. So case one, case two, case three, case n, we'll be doing that. And then we've got our default query here that we execute if none of those cases have been met. So this condition is met, we execute this query. If this condition is met, we execute this query. If none of the conditions are met, we execute this query. And then what we have here is the parameters in the curly braces. This will be the variable that we are passing through that we're either doing condition against or updating as part of the query. And you can have more than one parameter. So it follows this params, colon params pattern, and then you'd put a comma and then put in the next parameter you wanted to use. Just bear in mind that we wrap the queries in quotes. 
So just to make you aware of that. So if we have a look at the Cypher query that we're going to be running, we've got the match movie. So this is we're going to bring back all of the movie nodes. We then call our APOC do case procedure. And here is our first condition. So we're looking for movies that have a released year of equal to or greater than 1955 and a released year of less than 1977. And if it meets that criteria, we're going to set the new property of era to our movie. And in this example, we're going to set it to string changes. Same idea here for our next case. And again, we're going to set the era to blockbuster when that condition is met. And then here in purple, we've got our default query that we're going to execute if none of the other conditions have been met. And you'll notice here we've got our parameter M. So this is the M that we've pulled from movie. And here you can see we're using it for the condition and we're setting the value there. And we yield value. And then to pull that information back, which we're going to do, so we're going to list the title of the film, the release year and what era we've associated with it. You can see we do that by calling value. And then what we return here, that will be what follows from the dot from value. So M dot title, M dot released. So let's have a look at that. So we've got the query here, so I'm going to execute it. And there we go. So let's have a look at the next one. In this example, we want to return the era description based on the movie. So we're going to be using APOC case. So notice there's no do here, which means this is a read query. And if we have a look at the anatomy of this procedure, you can see it's the same pattern as previously. So if you look at the associated cipher query with this, you can see here we're calling the movie with the title of the matrix. So we want to have a look at the movie of the matrix. And the same idea again, we have the condition and the query we're going to run. So for each of the eras that we match, we're going to return a string, which is going to contain the description for that era. So you can see here, no writing is taking place. Same as before, we've got a parameter of M. And notice here, I've done it slightly differently. So here, I've not specified a default query. And that's OK. If you don't want to execute a default query, we don't have to. Leave the string empty there. And again, we're going to be yielding a value. And we're going to pull the information back. So here, we've got the description. So value.description. We've got here. We're bringing that back and sending it back. So let's execute that query. So as you can see here, we have our more verbose description for each of the eras. So let's execute the query and find out what our description is going to be for the matrix. And there we go. We've got the description back for the blockbuster era, which is associated to the matrix. Our third example, we want to classify actors based on the number of films that they've acted in. And in this example, we're going to be using the APOC when procedure. Notice again, we don't have a do in here, which means this is going to be another read query. And if we have a look at what the anatomy of this query looks like, you can see we have a condition. If that condition is met, we'll execute the if query. If that condition is not met, we'll execute the else query. And again, we have the parameters wrapped in curly braces and we yield a value. Note here, we do not have the square brackets involved. So no square brackets are used here. And again, as before, we'd wrap our queries in quotes. And if we have a look at the associated cipher query that we're going to be executing, what we're doing here is we're matching persons that acted in a movie. With distinct P means we want to get the unique person because a person may have acted in many films. And then what we do here is we're collecting all of the movie nodes into one collection. And when we look in what we're doing with our APOC when procedure, we're doing a count on the movies. And if the size of this is greater than five, we're going to return established as a status for the actor. And if it's less than five, we're going to be returning upcoming as a status. So same again, we've got our parameters here. So returning the person's name, we're going to return the value.status as their status. So this is not going to be writing to the database, we're just sending back a map in. So let's have a look at this. And here's the query. So we're just going to execute that now. And we've got our responses back. So we can see we've got some of the established and upcoming actors based on the small data set that we have. 
And last but not least, we're going to further enrich the graph by adding new node labels to the person nodes for the actors based on what movie eras they have acted in. And to do this, we're going to be using APOC do when. And you'll notice here we have the do, which means this is going to be a write query. And if we look at the anatomy of this procedure, you can see again, much like the APOC when, we have a condition. If the condition is met, we run the if query. If the condition is not met, we run the else query. And we have a set of parameters, and we're going to yield a value. So if you have a look at the cipher query we're going to run, quite similar to the previous one that we looked at, we have match a person acted in a movie. Again, we want the distinct person. But in this example, we are collecting eras. But because there may be many films of the same era, we want the distinct era. So effectively, we're going to have persons who may have one or more era associated with them. And in our APOC do when, we're saying that if an actor has more than one era, we're going to say that they are legacy actors. So we're going to set a legacy label to the person node. Otherwise, we're going to set a Hollywood label to the person node. And we have the parameters and yield value, but we're not expecting to return anything. So we're going to return a null. So let's have a look at that query. So here's the query and we're just going to run that. So as we discussed, we weren't expecting to see any results. However, if we have a look at the database, we'll see we've got two new labels. We've got Hollywood and Legacy. So if I click on Hollywood and select a person, you can see we've now got two labels associated with them. We've got Hollywood and person. And if we click on Legacy and select a person, you can see they've got legacy and person labels attached to them. So there you go. We've covered four examples of how we can use the APOC conditional procedures. I hope you've found that useful and please do give it a go. Thank you.